Hello there and welcome back to the channel. Okay, so if you're watching this video, you've probably already learned the Lilting Banshee, either from our tutorial video or you already know it. What this video is going to do is we're going to teach you a load of different ornamentation and variation for the tune so that you can dress it up and make it more interesting for you to play and also for the people listening to you. We're going to cover things like triplets, trebles, slides, hammer-ons, pull-offs and chords, maybe a few other bits as well. So make sure you have the tune really well learned before you attempt this video and there's going to be a lot of technique in here so you probably don't want to use all of it and maybe even some of it you won't like. Just pick out the stuff that you like and is pleasing to your ears and learn it. When also playing the tune and learning these techniques within the tune I'd say have a version of it where you play absolutely everything all the ornamentation and techniques even though it's too much and when you come to working out a version that you want to play at your session just peel back the ornamentation to I'd say the bare minimum so essentially what you want to do is play the tune first just almost bare bones the second time round that you play it start adding in some of the more basic variations and, and techniques and then by the last time through you should be all whistles and bells in a tasteful way okay so let's get into our first technique okay so let's have a look at the a part and see where we can put in those ornamentation so let's have a look at bar one phrase one okay so we got a few options here we're going to start by with a slide nice and easy so take your index finger put it onto the e flat and you're going to pluck the note on the e flat and then slide it up into the e Next, using the same notes, we're going to do a chord. So I'm striking my bottom string open, which is an A. And I'm also striking the string next to it, which has my index finger on, which is the E. And that's giving me an A harmony or chordal note underneath. And then I'm playing the A as part of the phrase. You can try combining these as well for the slide and the chord. Okay. Now, the next piece of ornamentation to look at is a treble. Because we have two A quavers together in this phrase, we can essentially shorten them and make them into three notes, which is our treble. stacking ornamentation slide the E treble the A put the chord in now we're sliding the E while playing the A as the harmonic underneath and trebling the A so you've got quite a lot of technique all stacked up there so phrase two what can we do with it Okay, so the B, A, B, we can treble it. So I'm playing a quaver, then doing the treble. So phrases one and two together. Okay, with ornamentation on both phrases. Sorry, and again, ornamentation on both phrases. Ornamentation on both phrases. Okay, and that long B, you could treble there, but it sounds a bit boring having two long quavers next to each other, so I prefer to play it as a chord. And it's a chord of G. So I don't actually move my finger from the B, I play the treble on the B, and then my ring finger reaches over to hit that G and I strike both strings at the same time. From phrase one. From phrase one. OK. 
Okay, that's phrases one and two with ornamentation. Phrases three. Okay, so we can turn those three high E's into a treble. Okay, so you just shorten the quavers. And I'm putting the treble at the front this time. B, treble, quaver, E, D, E, D, B. Okay, phrase four. Not really adding much there. So when I get to the bottom of the phrase, I can strike the D, open D, and the A together to get a chord of D at the bottom. So what have I done there? So what have I done there? I've gone D and I've bent the B. And I'm doing a pull off as well. So what I do is I play the note of B, I bend it, and then I release it from my finger. And that plays me the open A, which is the next note. two A's so the first A is played with the pull off and then I strike the A with the plectrum for the next one we'll take it from phrase five okay that's your A part let's have a look at the B okay So what I'm doing there, you've got those three high A's together. Again, turn them into a treble. So the treble goes at the front. So you've got E, treble, an extra A, G, E. What you could also do, you could put the triplet between the G and the E. So you'd play a G, F sharp E triplet. Maybe you could do both together. It's probably a bit much putting that much ornamentation together in the same phrase, so I picked one or the other. The next phrase, just using that chord again on the long G, then we're in to the, which we've already discussed a treble triplet then the fourth phrase so here what I would probably do is replace the G F sharp G with another treble and I'm gonna play the G first then the treble okay then everything loops around so the only other thing we've got to put an ornamentation is, is at the end. And what I'm doing here, if I'm not bending the B, is on the long A, I'm playing the E, the A, the two open strings of E and A, I'm playing them together to give me a nice chord at the bottom. Okay, and that's all the ornamentation I'm using in the Lilting Banshee. Okay, I hope those techniques were useful for you. There's probably many hours of learning in there. And I'd really like to know in the comments below what your thoughts were. What were your favourite ornamentations? What would you like to see more of? But for now, I'm going to play the tune and I'll add in some of the techniques and variations that we learned today, just so you can get an idea of how they're used within the tune. Okay, here we go, the Lilting Banshee. <laughs>
Okay, good luck, and I hope you enjoy.